Alrighty, let's go to our next matchup here to watch. And we're going to the Chiefs and the Bengals. And obviously, we got to watch Joe Burrow. That man was absolutely magnificent last week. We watched the film on it 525 yards. And, you know, we I, looking back at it, maybe I was a little disrespectful to... Well, I, I guess I was this entire week where we were a little disrespectful to Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Seeing the Bengals plus five on the spread uh you know kind of thinking it was a trap bet turns out they win it was great value all that so we have been a little bit disrespecting Joe Burrow and the Bengals so we're gonna watch Joe Burrow's performance again let's see what this these throws were looking like for 400 yards plus again were these throws a little bit more in tighter coverage was Joe Burrow slinging it perfect accuracy uh giving his receivers a chance to go up and get the ball because we know these Bengals receivers folks Jamar Chase and T Higgins may be the best wide receiver duo in the league folks T Higgins is disgustingly undervalued right here. And I know Jamar Chase just had 266 yards. I know that was fantastic, but T. Higgins has silently put up like close to 100 yards like the last five, six weeks. The man has been truly flying, flying under the radar. Uh, so they've got great receivers. Joe Burrow, one of the best young arms in the league right now currently. You can make the argument for best young arm in the league, and I would maybe agree depending on what you bring in the debate. But, um, yeah, Joe Burrow, absolutely fantastic. So we're going to watch his highlights here and uh, respect him maybe a little bit more this week. And then I want to take the final drive by the Chiefs. Why did it stall in a field goal? Why did they just have to tie up the game with kicking the field goal? Why couldn't they get it done? Did Patrick Mahomes stall? Was it the great Bengals defense? And then... We'll watch the, kind of how the game ended. Not the greatest way to end the game for the Bengals and Zach Taylor with the fourth down calls, but we'll talk all that through. So here we go. Let's start here with Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's highlights. Let's remind you of his stats one more time because they're just absolutely immaculate. Joe Burrow, 30 of 39, 446 yards, four tugs, no picks. Oh, my God goodness oh my goodness fantastic all righty but here we go let's watch it the stats are great is the film equally as great better worse let's see what joe burrow was looking like on this historic performance here we go First play up on a third and five in the first quarter. Joe Burrow, a little bit of a hesitation, avoiding the pressure. And then look at that, keeping his eyes strong down the field. Now, this was about a yard short of the first down, so not great overall. But just shows Joe Burrow's escapability and all that cool, calm collectiveness in the pocket. And that's something that we have been kind of talking about um, this week. Uh, ba um, Joe, no, geez. Uh, Baker Mayfield, not comfortable in the the pocket always wanting to step up and can never shake off tackles same thing with Tua a little bit here but Joe Burrow has no problem a little bit of a fake step up then goes backwards able to juke out the edge uh, the pass defenders that Tyron Matthew blitzing it wouldn't surprise me but well done by Joe Burrow just to not to go down yes it's not a first down off the pass but his escapability in the pocket that was fantastic now, here we go on third and 17. Joe Burrow escapes in the pocket again. Right, uh, chooses the right lane on the step up. Dinks it down to Joe Mixon. Once again, not another first down pickup, but Joe Burrow showing us what he can do in the pocket. And I may be, folks, this is something that I may be talking about a lot in the offseason, but I may be done on just small quarterbacks. Baker Mayfield, Tua not getting it done in the clutches of games, where we get Joe Burrow, I want to say, what is he, 6'4", where we get Baker Mayfield like 6'0", Tua like 6'0", and you know, um... Drew Brees is kind of the one to blame for all these short quarterbacks getting the nod, getting the look, getting the draft pick because obviously Drew Brees is one of the best quarterbacks of all time. But, I mean, he is the outlier. He is the exception. Like, Tom Brady is the exception to every quarterback rule we have. Um, Drew Brees may be the exception to the rule of small quarterbacks. So, Baker Mayfield, small, too a small. I think I'm just done with small quarterbacks. Josh Allen, big and beefy. Justin Hurts. Herber, big. Joe Burrow, big, tall. Let's get his official height. I want to say he's 6'4". I'm almost certain he's 6'4". 
What do we got by Joe Burrow? 6'4", same thing. Josh Allen, Joe, uh, Justin Herbert, all around 6'4", 6 6'6", 6 6, folks. So I think I may be done with the small quarterbacks. I'm I'm, I'm this close of just exiling all small quarterbacks. I won't even talk about small quarterbacks next season. And we've been defending Tua, but I can't defend the size anymore, folks. Let's quickly talk. Let, let's go over these quarterbacks in the playoff picture as of this moment. Let's see who the smallest, shortest quarterback is. We get... Ryan Tannehill, the number one seed in the AFC. Who would have thought? And once again, Ryan Tannehill is not the best passer in the league, folks. He's a game manager. But his size, his size. When there's a small quarterback back there, the defense just wants to blitz and overwhelm them, get their hands up. Hey, Shorty, can't look over me. I'm a big old beefy defensive lineman with my hands up. Oh, can you see? Oh, can't see, can't see, can't see. So I'm done. I think I'm I'm about like one more week out, folks. I'm about one more week off from truly swearing off short quarterbacks. I will never buy into another short quarterback as long as I live, folks. And I got, uh, I'm not going to win. I, I think I got another 60, 70 years on me. Um, so that's a long time of swearing off short quarterbacks. But here we go. Ryan Tannehill. And I don't even care that this is cutting into our film study. I don't care. I'm. This is how done I am, folks. Ryan Tannehill. Here we go. I want to say this man is like 6'4 as well. 6'3. Uh, a little bit of uh, maybe smaller than Joe Burrow. No, 6'4. Same thing like Joe Burrow, folks. All right. Who else do we get? The Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. 6'4. Again. Here we go. Let's get his height up here. Patrick Mahomes, 6'3", a little bit shorter. So it's going to be like 6'2 is the cutoff. I think we might have to make 6'2 the cutoff. But Patrick Mahomes over that cutoff of 6'3". Joe Burrow, we already looked up 6'4". Josh Allen, I want to say, is 6'6", six, six, folks. I know Justin Herbert's about 6'6", six, six as well. Josh Allen, 6'5", 237. Man, that's the height. Uh, we get Mac Jones. What is Mac Jones? Now, Mac Jones may be like 6'1", 6'2". And once again, this one is a little bit out of the, you know, cat's a little bit out of the bag here. We're really not sure if Mac Jones is good or not quite yet. But he's even 6'3". So once again, 6'3 is the mark. 6'3 is the lowest I will ever go of buying, believing, and betting on quarterbacks. I'm done with the shorties. I'm done. What else do we get? Um, Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is a solid 6'3", I would say. 6'4". Let's see what we get with Carson Wentz. And Carson Wentz isn't even that good, but he's in the playoffs just because he's tall. That's all you need to do. If you're tall, you're in the playoffs. He's 6'5". This man is playing garbage at 6'5". Damn, that's disappointing, Carson. Damn. And then Justin Herbert, a healthy old 6'6". Let's double check this. I'm almost 100% certain 6'6", but we'll double check it anyway. What else do we got on Justin Herbert? Herb, 6'6", to tall. List of the AFC quarterbacks. Yes, yes, yes. All right, now the AFC. Aaron Rodgers. We don't got to look up this, but we'll do it. Aaron Rodgers, 6'4", at least. 6'3", at least. What do we got? Aaron Rodgers, officially. What do we got him listed at officially here? 6'2". Oh, Aaron Rodgers. The exception to the rule. We got a little bit of an exception. We wanted to mark it 6'3". We still might want to mark it 6'3", but Aaron Rodgers, 6'2". Oh, it's the toe injury. I forgot. The toe, he's a little shrunken. So I think this is a new updated height on Aaron Rodgers, folks. He's probably 6'3". Uh, Matthew Stafford, what do we got? Matthew Stafford's probably a solid 6'4-ish as well. What else? Do, what do we got here? Or is he going to be a surprising 6'2 uh, like Aaron Rodgers? 6'3, all righty. Uh, Tom Brady, how tall is Tom Brady? 6'3, 6'2. What, do we, what else do we got? Do we have to make an exception to the rule? Whatever Tom Brady is. Tom Brady could be four foot one. I don't give a damn. He's the greatest quarterback of all time in the exception to the rule. But he's 6'4", so we don't even have to make the exception. Dak Prescott. I think he's a solid 6'3 right here. Here we go. Um, nope, just got to do Dak Prescott. Here we go. Dak Prescott is... 6-2. All right, so 6-2 may be the cutoff. Maybe we can sink down to King 6-2. Uh, uh, Kyler Murray, obviously a little bit of an exception to the rule here because of that dual threat ability. But now even like Russell Wilson. Is Russell Wilson even good anymore? Kyler Murray at 5-10. And Russell Wilson, I mean, his credentials have to kind of be challenged this offseason as well. Is it all just the uh, Seahawks offense just being trash? They got rid of their offensive coordinator, still trash and all that. So now Oh, do we have to turn our focus to Russell Wilson, folks? Russell Wilson, what do we got with him? The man is 
5'11", so Kyler Murray 5'10", the exception to the rule, but how long the exception to the rule? Russell Wilson had a great five-year stretch, and now he's starting to fall off, so maybe it truly is turning the corner of only big quarterbacks being good. So, exceptions to the rule, folks. If you're not if you're not 6'2", you better hope you're a dual threat like Kyler Murray, like Russell Wilson, like Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts isn't that big. I want to say Jalen Hurts may maybe six foot let's get that up uh, since this Eagles team is in the playoffs Jalen Hurts is 6'1", so even, I mean, he's dual threat. He's 6'1", right under that hook, so Tua's not dual threat. Baker Mayfield's not dual threat. I am done this close to being done with the short quarterbacks. This done. This close. But let's get back to the footage here. Here we go. Let's get back to our main focus here, which is the film study. Got to fast forward back into uh, this Joe Burrow highlight package. Once again, the, uh, the these websites here, these pages just automatically refresh on their own. Once again, NFL.com Game Pass is the worst website in NFL or just in history. Worst product in history. Worst everything in history. It's so trash. But here we go. Back to Joe Burrow. The tall 6'4 Joe Burrow getting it done. Let's see what this man can do. What else does this man have for us? Here we go, second and seven, Joe Burrow, boom, wide open target right there, and Jamar Chase takes it all the way to the house. I mean, obviously, he needs to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Stop it with the Mac Jones talk. This man is just getting it done, consistent, reliable, a huge reason for this Bengals kind of culture turnaround in the last two seasons, even though he's a rookie this year. Here we go, Joe Burrow on a comeback route, Jamar Chase with the bobble, but gets two feet in bounds, and that's a completion. Down 21-7 to here. Joe Burrow, pressure field, but he's cool. He's cool as a cucumber. Wide open. Look at all these receivers just getting open, folks. Great offensive scheming here. Joe Burrow able to see it because he's 6'4", can see over the line to make all these deep, wide open throws. And then once he sees he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup, he throws back shoulder to Jamar Chase in the end zone. And that's what I love about Joe Burrow here the last couple of weeks, just letting these receivers go one-on-one -on -one and get it done. T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, I would throw it up 50-50 for them every single play. I don't care. Every uh, What I would call offensively is just two go routes on the, each side of the field, and I'll take my chances. Um, on the 50-50 ball. Go up and get it. These are great receivers. Here we go. I don't know what the hell this Chiefs defense was looking at here, but they all just uh, jump on this route. Jamar Chase keeps on going, and once again, Joe Burrow on the money. Reads it perfectly. This Chiefs defense, ugh, what is going on with this Bengals offense that is giving every team so much trouble defensively? Ravens kind of known as a great defense. Obliterated them. Chiefs have come into their own as a great defense these last couple of weeks. Obliterated Iterated them. What is going on? Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow has these teams. Uh, I don't even know. He has them. Um, has them going crazy. <laughs> they don't know what to do. And then Joe Burrow loading it up deep. T. Higgins deep. Yes, yes, yes. On the boundary. Throwing it up. Let's count the yards on this throw. Joe Burrow with the big arm. Launching it from his own 25-yard line. Getting it all the way down to the 35. So a solid 40 yards right there all through the air. And it's T. Higgins again getting this ball. Great hands by T. Higgins. Once again, another one-on-one -on -one matchup, and Joe Burrow takes advantage of it, giving your playmakers a chance to succeed. Another reason why we love Justin Herbert as well. And then here we go, Joe Burrow in the red zone. What a touch. What a touch on this ball. Holy moly. Back corner end zone. It's not wide open, but it's about two, three yards open. And Joe Burrow with the great ball placement in the corner. And that's another great touchdown throw by Joey B. Yes, sir. All right, 30 more seconds here of the highlight package. What else do you got for us? Joey B on this fourth quarter drive, throwing it up for Jamar Chase. And Jamar Chase with the excellent hands. This throw may be a tad, a tad underthrown, a tad underthrown. But it's Jamar Chase and T. Higgins on the other side. They go and get the ball. They will do whatever it takes to go and get the ball. Jump back over the uh, defenders, whatever it takes. Here it is. A little bit of a better throw of a ball. in Jamar Chase able to just change direction, change his body at the last second to adjust to this ball. I mean, man, oh, man. So, Bengals, you got to watch out for this team. 
offensive explosion. They get down. It doesn't phase them. They stick to their plan. They stick to their deep ball throws, and they get it done, and they end up with the win, 34-31. to All right, let's see. Is this Bengals defense as good as this Bengals offense is? So here we go. The Chiefs down three points, and they're driving the ball. They get just basically at the red zone at the 21-yard line, but they can't get it done. So let's take a look at this Chiefs offense, this Bengals defense. Let's see who got it done more. Was it just the Chiefs not able to get it done offensively, or did this Bengals defense step up absolutely big time and get it done to force the Chiefs only for a field goal to tie the game, giving Joe Burrow a chance to win the game on that final drive like we saw. So let's see. doesn't seem like we're going to be able to do this because this is not loading. So that's never a good sign, obviously. 